Edujit Tamaklo, Godwin Edujit Tamaklo is a, is, a, is a private legal practitioner. He is also uh, the director of legal for the NDC. He's been following this case quite closely as well. Uh, Council, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And uh, good evening to your viewers. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, and if you can go back a bit for us um, so we get the full image of you. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight, also live on 3FM 92.7. Essentially, uh, you heard what Dennis has laid out, um, what the reasoning behind those who ruled in favor of the plaintiff, the Supreme Court justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiffs put out, that the only plausible conclusion which must necessarily flow from a holistic and contextual reading of 97, 1 G and H is that an MP seat shall be vacated upon departure from the cohort of his elected party in parliament to join another party in parliament while seeking to re remain in that parliament as a member of the new party, Council. Okay, so <clears throat> I think it's important that uh, um, your colleague, he's Dennis, right? If you, if you could sit back a bit for me, yes, great. I mean, he's Dennis, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes that's right. Good. So you see, I think he makes a few more uh, matters. He mixes up a few issues that needs to be corrected. So in Ghana, getting into parliament is by two ways. Either as an independent candidate or sponsored by a political party. Now, when you are sponsored by a political party, you pick the identity of that political party. So you even see that in the notice of hope, it is not just the picture of that individual. You also have the political party and its symbol that is sponsoring the person. When you are an independent candidate, you don't go through that kind of association. Now, it's important, and I like the way you raised the, the Article 9 of the MPP Constitution. Very instructive. Because, you see, what Article 9 of the MPP Constitution says is simple. Now, once the MPP has the officially elected parliamentary candidate, and you take the step of becoming an independent candidate, the party constitution says you forfeit your membership automatically. Now, you see, there's a history to Article 97. And oftentimes, when the Supreme Court has the opportunity to interpret our Constitution, the fundamental reason is that the Constitution is a living organism, but it also mirrors our history. What, therefore, is our history? If you recall, in 1979, the parliament that took its life from 1979 had Victor Usu as the leader of the opposition there against Lima. Now, two principal members of Victor Uso's party, that is, Loya Kwekula and J.H. Uso Champo, came on the ticket of Victor Uso's party. They got into parliament, and one day said they were no longer members of Victor Uso's party. However, they said they want to remain in parliament. And in fact, they remain in parliament until the coup, until the coup of 1981. So when we were drafting the 1992 constitution, mindful of the events of 1979, we introduced Article 97, 1, G, and H to correct and to kill that 1979 mystery, where the person leaves the political party that brought him and still want to remain and do business. So this time around, we introduce the clause back case, your seat, and it's automatic. And so if you look at even the standing orders, standing order 18, the speaker only informed parliament of the occurrence of that vacancy. Nothing more, nothing else. So we need to understand that as a people, we have walked a journey from 79 till now. And so that what happened in 79, we do not want it to repeat itself. And so you notice that 
the Supreme Court, with the greatest respect, in seeking to interpret Articles 97, 1, G, and H, had no records to our history. And why, for the 1992 Constitution, we introduced those specific provisions? Two, the Constitution contemplates two things happening. And that is reference to Article 112. In Article 112, 5 and 6, he said that if the events in Article 97 happens six months be before the next election, then you can have a by-election. However, if it is just three months to the next election, then there's no opportunity for by-election. So the issue that people will be denied representation does not even arise. The framers of the Constitution cured it. Now, to the judgment itself, Alfred. Okay. You will notice, reading from page four, the heading is facts. The lead author of the majority judgment, his lordship justice, Yao Asari Daku, in recounting the facts that originated this whole action, admitted that at the time when Afenyo Market Honorable issued the writ out of the registry of the Supreme Court. Speaker has not taken any action. Now, if that is the case, then as at the day Afenyo Markin issued the writ, he was only seeking an opinion from the Supreme Court. That it is, is that, that is that is without if, please go ahead. That is if the writ was was not amended. As it were. And you, exactly. We, and you we, see, we, we don't have records of that, but that is if it was and, and you see, Afenyo Markin and his lawyers, after Speaker informed the House of that decision, they didn't go back to the court to amend their pleadings to reflect this new fact, these new events. If they had done that, would we have known or... No, it's a matter of record. In fact, the judge himself concedes and one thing that you must understand, that the Supreme Court, with the greatest respect, doesn't operate like an octopus. You see, the octopus has many tentacles. So it goes everywhere looking for something to justify something. In this specific case, it's a court of record. The matter before the Supreme Court, as at the time it was giving judgment, were the pleadings, the writs, and the statement of case. The statement of case book recounts the factual basis that is informing the invocation of the jurisdiction. Now remember that this is not an appeal. This is an original action pursuant to Article 2. Now what you need to ask yourself is, what is in Article 2? Article 2 says that if I come to the court alleging that Alfred had acted or had failed to act, so we use an act or omission, which contravenes an express provision of the Constitution, I can come to the court and invokes its original jurisdiction. Now, question is, on Monday, when Afenio Markin issued the writ out of the registry of the Supreme Court, has Speaker taken any decision? No. So where did the Supreme Court get those facts from? Okay, but the but, so, but and, and and that is why and that is why if you look at the minority opinion, His Lordship Justice uh, 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 Amadou uh, um, Tanku recognized that defect. He recognized the defect in that particular process, and in fact made this. Very important pronouncement. If you permit me, may I just read what he said? Briefly. Alfred, briefly. can I, can I Qu proceed? Quickly, quickly, yes. He said, the court is not a court to elicit opinions or academic information, but settles life disputes. Therefore, where a contention brought before the court, especially 
If the same is anchored on the, on the invocation of the court's original jurisdiction, it's not life. It is fanciful or frivolous. Okay. It, is a waste, it is a waste of judicial economy for the court to entertain sin. Further, the court must not be seen to be hiding under its interpretative function to be making laws as if it were parliament. So you see, so his lordship justice Amadou Tanko realized quickly that the plaintiff here, Afenyo Makin, never came back to the court to amend the writ and the statement of case to now plead those new facts, which is the conduct of the speaker. And you see, that is why you notice that whereas the Supreme Court granted relief one, hmm? I mean the majority, granted relief one, they couldn't go further in making any further consequential orders. But well, because Counsel, but I mean, you, you saw Dennis make reference to the, the uh, precedents. In fact, five instances that the Supreme Court justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff referenced. And out of those five instances, only one who suffered the consequence of losing his seat in the case of the former MP. And so, really, why should that be the only reference point for the justification of this this action by, by the speaker. No, but you see, that's it. You see, as far as the judgment is concerned, this point raised is immaterial. Why is that? No, because you see, when you go back to the reliefs which were attached to the rates, hmm, it simply creates an issue of futuristic or everything that is done is to the future. And that, for instance, if you move from independent to MPP, okay, that movement from independent to MPP, right, does not take effect now, except the election that you are going to contest. Okay. Meanwhile, Alfred, Alfred, if you pick your constitution, Article 97, you see by Article 97, the word tenor of members. That tenor obviously is just an aid to interpretation. That tenor is not futuristic. It is a now. Two, as we speak, hmm, the MPP, then MPP MP for Aguna West, Cynthia Morrison, hmm, having oh, taken oh. that post, having taken the positive step, hmm, of filing formally before the Electoral Commission her candidature to be independent hmm? by reason of Article 93 of the MPP Constitution. She is no longer an MPP member. So, with respect, you see a certain level of confusion in the judgment of the Supreme Court majority okay. because what it means is that you can wake up in the morning as an MPP member. By close of day in the evening, you are no longer an MPP member. But by reasoning of the Supreme Court, you can still remain in Parliament. Well, How is that even possible? When it is the party that sponsored you? Because, you see, this decision of the Supreme Court takes us back well, to well, well, So the Supreme Court puts, puts supremacy on the constituents represented no. by the MP. And non, and non necessarily no, the party who, 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 who sponsored him um, having no, to dictate there's no, the, the, see, the status of the person see, in parliament. Let me tell you if you are Fred, assuming you go to Keta, listen carefully, mm -hmm. or Keta South, and you say you are an MPP member, that alone can decide your future. If you go to Bantama and you say you are an MPP parliamentary candidate, or you say you are an NDC parliamentary candidate, that alone will decide your future. So to suggest even remotely that political party associations have no bearing with the greatest respect, 
is to completely lose the game. Because, like I pointed out earlier, Article 97, 1, H, and G were specifically put in there to cure a problem. Now, Supreme Court has taken us back to 1979. Okay. So what it means is that by the reasoning of the majority Supreme Court judges, right. what it means is that you can actually leave your political party for whatever reason and still remain there. Or your party can say, so so and so person is no longer our member. I'll tell you what, th this but, is... Th th this is but just... then, you can still remain in parliament for God knows. Okay. And that is where... And, and, and let me make another quick point. Th 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 in, in 30 seconds. I need to round up on this quickly. Yes. yes, in 30 seconds. You also note that the speaker never filed his defense and statement of case, more or less, right? However... The majority judges appears to take the view that the speaker raised an issue about their jurisdiction. Where from that? Okay. Where did they get that view from? Well, well counsel, this is the beginning of a, a number of days ahead of us that we're going to in interrogate and have conversations on various parts of this 109-page ruling. But I do appreciate your time for this initial part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate the opportunity. Godwin Edujit Tamaklo is private legal practitioner, also the director of legal for the NDC. Uh, Dennis, now, the, the, there's a, a quick point you want to make there, a very quick one. Well, it just had to do with the Supreme Court's position that Absolute. the attempt to take the power away from the political parties in determining the balance in parliament. And I quote what the Supreme Court says precisely. That Article 971G does not give political parties the power to disrupt the balance of parliament mm -hmm. by removing MPs based on internal party decisions. And that was precisely what the Supreme Court said in that particular respect. And the filing processes that the uh, council talks about, mm -hmm. it describes those as mere administrative processes that are required for every, uh, every um, election. election. So yes, those were addressed, all right. But what was essentially said was the fact that they do not want to leave that power in the hands of political parties to disrupt the balance of parliament. Okay, perfect. Now, this is a conversation that, look, we're, we're going to stay the steam on in the coming days in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3 and across all media journal platforms. And uh, stay with us here on Ghana Tonight, also on your election command center.